Now, one of the essential underlying foundations you need to truly understand the music you're playing is a really thorough understanding of the major scale with no stone left unturned. I'm gonna break down what I think that means in today's theory lesson. Now, I notice a lot of players trying to do things with modes, trying to apply modes over chord changes when they haven't really yet explored the basics of the major scale. I don't know, maybe the major scale just has a bit of a, a reputation for being a bit uncool, but I personally think if you have a thorough knowledge of it in every key, things like jazz harmony, arpeggios, chords, and things like modes will make a lot more sense. Do the work to get that solid foundation and you'll find other things much easier to understand and apply. Now, everything you see on the screen is available as a PDF, link in the description. In the description, you'll also find a link to my Patreon page and this month I have launched a new theory tier, which I'll come on to later. So what are the basics? I suppose the question really is, what do I want you to get from this? What are the sort of theoretical goals you should have and, and things you want to try to work towards understanding and just knowing. For me, there's four and I'll put them on the screen. So first one is understanding how the major scale is constructed. So that's understanding its intervals and the, the distance between the notes and then being able to roll that out to the other keys. Second one, knowing your sharp major scales and key signatures. Third goal, knowing your flat major scales and key signatures. And the fourth one relates to all of it but it's knowing all of that off by heart. Major scale construction. So every scale has its own DNA, if you like, and that DNA is the distance between the notes. And those distances can be described as intervals. And when talking about the major scale, we talk about them in two ways. We talk about either a distance of a tone or the distance of a semitone. Those can be shortened down to T for tone and ST for semitone, often the case. And on the guitar, how that works is a tone is two frets. So say if you played fret one, a tone would be at fret three. That'd be the distance. And then if you had a semitone, that's the distance of one fret. So if you played fret one, fret two is a semitone above that fret. So the distances in the major scale, that it's DNA if you like, goes as follows. Tone, tone, semitone, Tone, 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 semitone. Tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. If we related to this guitar now, I'll put some fretboard diagrams on the screen so you can visualize this. So if I found a C on the B string at fret one and use that formula, I'd get the following. I get the C major scale because I'm starting from a C. Uh, so we would go from fret one, C, go up a tone to a D. Then we need to go another tone and that would take us from D to E. Then from E, we need to go a semitone, which is one fret above to F. And then we need to go a tone from F to G, a tone from G to A, a tone from A to B, and then finally a semitone from B to C. And there, maybe it's easier for you to see. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. This is a formula which will yield all the other major scales. So I start from any note and it will give me that major scale. If we stuck on the same string, but started at fret three and did the same tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, we'd get the following. D at fret three, move a tone to E at fret five, move a tone to F sharp at fret seven. Then we got our semitone to a G at fret eight. Tone to A at fret 10. A tone to B at fret 12. A tone to C sharp at fret 14. And then a semitone to back to our root, the octave of our root to D. That intervallic formula, that DNA if you like, will, wherever you start from will yield that scale, the major scale, but from that start note. So if you start on a D, it gives you the D major scale. If you start from a E, it would give you the E major scale. Let's do one more, let's do it on another string. Let's start from an open string because that will feel a little bit different and it will look different to how it does on the previous two examples. So let's do the low E string. So we're going to start with the open E, then we're going to move a tone to fret 2, F sharp. Then we're going to move a tone to fret 4, G sharp. Semitone to A at fret 5. Tone to B at fret 7. Tone to C sharp at uh, fret 9. Tone to D sharp, fret 11. Semitone back to E. 
Now, a question you might have is, do I use sharps or flats? That's something we come to. Don't worry about it for now. Uh, one other last thing at this stage we should talk about is intervals as well, in that those notes get numbered. Not only do they have names, go back to the C scale, which, you know, when we applied our formula, it gave us C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But we also number those notes, one to eight. So C is one, D is two, E is the third of the scale, F is the fourth, G the fifth. A the 6th, B the 7th, and getting back to C is the octave, you could call it 8 or it's back to 1, either would be fine. So we know the formula for the scale now, and we know that we could use that formula and build a major scale from any note. But how do we go about logically learning this in every key? The way I like to approach this with students is break it down into two tasks. We're going to learn the sharps first, and then second to take care of the flats. In my experience, most guitar players find sharp keys easier. I think a lot more of popular bass music is, is written in a lot of common keys and a lot of those happen to be sharp keys. So hit me up in the comments if you think differently, but I think it's an interesting, you know, thing particular to the guitar. At this point, I'd like to introduce the circle of fifths and here it is on the screen. So this is gonna be very useful for you to learning all of this information. Now it is called the circle of fifths because if you start at C at 12 o'clock and go clockwise, the next scale is a fifth away. Think about the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, so that's five away. Now we are going to concern ourselves just with the sharp scales in this lesson. And we're going to move in fifths starting from C at 12 o'clock as I said. And these things on the outside are what's called the key signatures. So you'll see one here that's got one sharp, that's the key of G. You'll see C major, there's nothing by that, that's because there's no sharps or flats in that scale. And, but you know, if you look at others, say I say G's got one sharp, D's got two, and so on until we get to when we max out with sharps down here with seven sharps. So I'm now gonna show you how you can go from C major to getting all of the, the sharp major scales. Now there's three rules which will make more sense as we do this, but just to go through them. First rule, the next scale is from the fifth of the current one. Second rule, the next scale will have all the same notes as the previous one, apart from the last note which will become a sharp. And the third rule, every scale has each letter of the musical alphabet. Every scale will have an A, B, C, D, E, F, G in it. Sometimes as a sharp, sometimes as a natural note. And if I take this away, I'll make the font nice and big for you. Uh, so we start C major at 12 o'clock on circle of fifths. I'm gonna write out the notes, make this nice and visual for you. I'm gonna write zero in brackets. Why? Because there's no sharps in that one, no flats either, right? Now, my rule then was to get to the next scale, we're gonna go to the fifth note of this one. We're gonna go to G. So I'm going to write G down here. Now, I'm then going to have all the same notes as in C, but I'm going to change my last note that I get to, the seventh note, to a sharp. Look, G, A, B, C, D, E, and then this will be a sharp. And then I've got a one in brackets. I'm going to make that red maybe, just so it's nice and visual. So there you go. We went to the fifth note, G, and then all of the notes in this scale are the same as the C scale, but from the final note became a sharp. So if we went to the next scale, hopefully you can work out that that would be D, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna retain any sharps that we've had. So we're gonna have an F sharp here. G, A, B, then the last note, which is a semitone below the root. We have C sharp, so now we've got two sharps again you will see that everything's going to get increasingly red next scale three along sorry five five along would be a so then we have a b c sharp and notice again we've still got every letter of the alphabet a b c It'd be very obvious in this one d e f is already a sharp from the previous ones and then the last note would normally be g we're going to change it to a sharp which is going to give us three sharps. We've got three now in there. So A is a key with three sharps. And these are the things to remember. Uh, so G is a key with one sharp. D is a key with two. A is the key with three sharps. Moving on, 
the fifth of A is E. So then E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp. And then the final note, we're looking for a D, it's going to have to be a D sharp. So we've got four sharps in the key of E. Excuse me. So that gives us, let's say, you see a quite good laid out like this. I think it makes it more obvious than in just, just note form. If we move to the next key, the fifth of E, one, two, three, four, five is B. Then we have B. We've got Caesar sharp already, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, and our final note on this scale, seventh note, is going to be a sharp. We have five in that key. So B has got five sharps, a key that's not that common, to be honest, in jazz context. And then our next key, what's the fifth of B? It's F sharp. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. Now we've got an interesting point here. You remember one of my rules was there has to be an A, B, C, E, D, F, G, each letter of the alphabet. So we want an E next, but we know the last note becomes a sharp. So we're gonna have E sharp. Now, E sharp on your instrument is technically the same as an F. Now, the reason we have it is that in written down music, in the major scale, if you're in the key of F sharp, if you had F sharp, and let's say I had F here instead of E sharp, you'd have to write, you'd have to use the same line for both notes and it would just be very complicated. This way on the musical stave, each note in the major scale will get its own line and it, it will make it easier to read. This might seem, if you've not come across E sharp before, you might think, no one's ever mentioned that before. That's a strange one. For me, it's really to do with making music as easy to read as possible. Um, and obviously you'll see here, it follows a kind of mathematical sort of purpose as well. Um, as you see here, we've got six sharps in this key. Um, now, you should be able to tell what the next sharp will be in the next key because we're only left with one natural note, which is going to give us an interesting note. Um, so our next scale is going to be C sharp. I want a capital C, sorry. D sharp, going to keep E sharp because we've got seven sharps in this key. And if any of you have seen The Simpsons uh, where Homer joins a barbershop quartet, you'll see the, the joke there about B-sharp. So there we go. Everything's red. I'll be honest, a lot of, there's not too many songs written in and out in these keys that I can think of that I've played. But I still think it's worth knowing for sort of completeness of information. Hopefully, just seeing it like that, the visual aspect of it, the use of colour, makes it more obvious to you. Hopefully the formulas that I spoke about, every scale has an A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you pick it up from A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yes, some are sharp, obviously, but that's why we get, you know, have E sharp, and that's why we have B sharp. Um, those two notes, E sharp on your instrument is the same place as an F, uh, B sharp is the same place as a C, but, uh, you know, it's uh, important to be aware of. Other thing to notice is obviously the last note becomes a sharp. We're moving in fifths, you know, we went C, D, E, F, G to the, and then we kept that up. D is the next scale, A is the next scale and so on. Uh, just things to remember, you know, sort of, so you could look at the start of a piece of music and see if you saw four sharps, then we're in the key of E. If you saw two, then we're in the key of D. So these are important things to recognize. Uh, I've included this as a PDF if it's helpful for you. And one way that often people like to remember the order in which the sharps appear, and that is like this, so F sharp, how they build as if you like, is with this. And it goes, silly little thing, father, Charles, goes down and ends battle. And that works like following father for F. So if you look at it like this, father, Charles, 
goes down and ends battle. Now the way that works, if there's one sharp in a key signature, it's F, father. The next key, or the key with two, will have father and Charles, F and C sharp. The key of A will have father Charles goes, father, ch sorry, father Charles goes. Next key after that would then have father Charles goes down until you get to the bottom, which has got all the sharps, father Charles goes down and ends battle. So if you're looking at a key signature that's got five sharps, you can just do it on your hand. Father, Charles, goes, down, ands. And you can work out the sharps from that. Now that document I created with the red and the black is available as a PDF link in the description. I've also got it presented like this for you, which is in musical notation, because I think it is important to look at a key signature and go, right, oh, if there's one sharp, that's the key of G major. This diagram that's on the screen now breaks down exactly what I just showed you in text form, but in musical notation with the key signatures. So it would be a case of maybe looking at both and trying to pair the two together. Ultimately, when you look at a piece of music at the start, it will have some very important information, chiefly the key signature and the time signature. Key signature will either have sharps or flats there or none at all, which we know means C major. Here's three examples for you with sharp keys. Example one. That had one sharp, so that was in the key of G major. Example two, this has four sharps, that's the key of E. Example three, no sharps or flats or anything, so that means the key of C. Now I don't want to jump down this big rabbit hole, but if I return to this circle of fifths diagram, you'll see we've got major on the outer circle, on the inner circle we've got minor. And what that is, it's the keys. We've got major keys on the outside, minor keys on the inner circle. And the key signatures that we've looked at today, those sharp major scales, so like one sharp equals G major, they also apply to what's called the relative minor. Now if you look at G major, you'll see on the inner circle there is E minor. G major and E minor share the same key signature, one sharp, which is F sharp. So just bear that in mind, it's something not to worry about just yet, but you may already have that question, you might be wondering what those inner mi minor chords mean. It's just a related relative minor of that one, they share key signatures. That's not a goal for you at the minute, I want you just to get your major scales first. So in this lesson, I've only covered half the story. You're also going to need to learn this for the flat scales as well, for the flat key signatures. That is available on my Patreon page. I've just launched a new tier, the Theorist tier, where each month I'm going to tackle a different aspect of music theory and there'll be additional content on there to, to help you with that and obviously the option to ask questions and apply these things. If you were to join the theory tier, you also get the benefits of the tiers below that. So that would give you one chord melody transcription a month, any backing tracks I upload, a comping study, and also my fretboard knowledge additional content too. Another way you can support the channel is I do have an ebook out on the C major scale and it goes into real detail about how the C major scale works and breaks down you know, what you can find within that you know, doing it in different intervals, triads and chords and so forth. That's a, a, a really useful thing to brush up on essential theory. Brings me just to say thank you for watching today's video. Please leave me a comment if you've enjoyed today's lesson or if you've got any questions and I, I will get back to you. But as ever, until next time, you take care.